Hello there and welcome to the Business Weekly on City TV, your one hour show on all the latest news in the world of business. My name is Michael Obudu. Do stay tuned. Finding a place to rent can be a very daunting task, particularly in urban areas like Accra. Where to even start from can be such a challenge. But thankfully, there are some people who have taken it upon themselves to solve this problem. We call them the rent agents. They save you the hassle of going on a wild goose chase in search of accommodation. Have you ever wondered how they operate? Well, this video explains how. The payment of rent, particularly for residential facilities, has over the years remained a headache for both the average Ghanaian and even those at the top of the social ladder. For most prospective tenants, issues such as high cost of rent and lack of proper regulation of the space comes as a concern, compounding the already stressful search for a decent or affordable place to lay their heads. In recent times, however, the concern has not mainly been about the cost of rent, but also the amount amount people spend engaging the services of rent agents, mostly in urban centers. In a city business news interaction with some rent agents, it emerged that for the properly regulated ones, one would have to start by filling out a registration form. An amount known as moving fee, which is usually around 50 Ghana cities, is then paid to the agent before the search for a place begins. After the prospective tenant settles on a house, he or she pays a 10% commission on the total amount charged by the property owner to the rent agent. Peter Mensa, who earns an average of 4,000 TDs per month, spoke about some of the factors that influence people's decision in settling for a particular house. When you come to the rent side, it also ranges from $1,005 upwards, which also depends on the um, location and then the beauty of the building. Compare that to um, the local ones, the local ones are sometimes it's cheap, but you wouldn't get what you want. You might face challenges, there are some places waterlogged and whatnot, whatnot, but it depends on you. Some people prefer to, because of the price range, they prefer to take that one compared to the estates. Mr. Kwabena from Pon, who has been a rent agent for more than eight years, spoke about the challenges they face despite the gains they make. Sebi, enye juma, ubebu ni seye juma fun, enye kure, senka, adofune ba yenche, no mudi ni kure ma yendia, kemefa nse eye, nensu no bibeba, wama ni dani kure uye no, odu si ka kure ma, na ebiti miye ntokwa se mkura, inti debe nse ube jane, ube jane, ube jane, ube jane, Mikasa.com, a real estate portal, serves clients through a virtual platform. The CEO, Kelvin Yami, believes the lack of regulation of the space is the reason why some agents take undue advantage of prospective tenants. The second challenge is the fact that, again, because it's not regulated, at anyone at all, even if you don't have the uh, property and you have the tenant, you can always fake as a, a tenant and go behind an agent to see where the property is so that you can take your tenant there instead of collaborating. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of instances where um, agents lose business because I think the main thing is because it's not regulated. Also, the landlord has not signed an agreement with you and so they don't mind who brings business to them. Mr. Frimpon wants prospective tenants to be vigilant when selecting rent agents to avoid being exploited by criminal elements. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to I don't know what I don't some members of the public shared their unpleasant experiences in their dealings with some rent agents. He was like, you meet us up. So my boyfriend has to meet him and we spoke with him. It was like we should pay him the amount. He called the amount and we, we should pay him. He said a, a month is 300. So we should pay two, uh, two years. So I was telling my boyfriend not to, because we need to get the landlord or anything before we make the payment. But the guy insisted and it brought a whole lot of issue. 
I have a friend who has gone through um, some few ages before getting his one, and it was so stressful and all that. He didn't get what he wanted, but the agent spoke to him that I have this and this and this, and when we got there, it was a different thing altogether. Oh, my mother was sure that all right. No, there's an if you run, I'm gonna send you a nice thing, baby. I don't know if I'm by Jimmy, Mr. Gakodi. Yeah, find out there's any baby for I'm just by five. So you can send me a draft of the document when you're done working on it, okay? Virtual conferencing is not entirely a new innovation, but with the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic, a lot of individuals and organizations are turning to it to prevent person-to-person -person interactions and limit the spread of the virus. Although this is quite convenient, some organizations are taking a hit from this new trend. The outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic negatively impacted several businesses, particularly those that thrive on events held on their premises. The Accra Metropolitan Assembly, for instance, has a number of halls it rents out for various events such as conferences and the likes. But business hasn't been the same since the outbreak of COVID-19. So before the COVID, we used to have about 10 programs a week using the main hall. But because of the COVID, now um, the programs are seized. They don't come as easy to come because of the social distancing. Um, it has affected us also because at first we used to use the, um, the outside area and the garden for events, which could take about 500, 2000 and over. But because of the restrictions and then the social distancing, now we have to um, decrease the number to as low as 50, 60, 70, which is on the bad side because most of the um, events that we have here are having higher numbers, but because of the COVID, it came down. The AMA Event Center is not the only one that has taken a hit. The hotels that usually facilitate conferences for their clients also felt the impact. A lot of the hotels have lost a big chunk of their revenues because of the challenges with organizing conferences and like you rightly said because of the move towards technology but we are hoping we are hoping that with time you see there's something about face-to-face -face interaction physical interaction which you can never beat technology cannot beat that okay so we are hoping that with time people will go back to that normal that we left somewhere in february and march and then I appreciate that face-to-face uh, -face interaction to has its own gig, okay, and they would want to return to that. But in the midst of this, there appears to be some others who are cashing in. Jonathan provides live streaming services for several organizations. Corporate events, yes, um, annual general meetings, you know, executive board meetings, yes. So for me, it's um, the church and the corporate world. So um, actually, the corporate people are now taking a key, okay? Because you know you have um, parent companies in the UK, in the US, and mostly they all fly down to either Ghana or to whichever country they choose to have their meetings. But then again, with Zoom and other, you know, Microsoft Teams and all that, um, I don't think if Corona comes to an end today, any board member would fly all the way to Ghana or to any other country just for a board meeting. The turn of events has caused some of these traditional service providers to revise their mode of operations. So we, for now, we are managing it because some hotels are even providing space for organizing some of these uh, uh, online uh, meetings or digital meetings as you, you, you call it. So it, it's not that bad. You know, we, we, we want to... Uh, want to appreciate the fact that COVID-19 is a reality. It has affected our business, but we have to look for ways to go around it. And that's exactly what every hotel is doing. And I'm sure with time, we'll bounce back and, and, and adjust to the new normal, as we want to call it. Workers of the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority are not so pleased with the Lands Commission. They believe the commission is hindering their plans of expansion. Let's find out what their concerns are in this video. 
Some of the lands reserved for the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority include a 61-acre land at La Wireless, 90 acres at La Ties, which houses the AU Village, Transmitters and Accident Investigation Bureau and Staff Bangalows, and 614 acres Lankwantanan land, which also houses a bungalow for staff and some technical infrastructure. Among other things, the workers claim government has taken over larger portions of these lands, leaving behind only portions of the land which may no longer afford the GCAA enough room to operate safely. According to the Coalition of Professional Associations and the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority Public Service Workers Union, the Lands Commission is to blame for selling some of these lands to private developers. William Amwakoba speaks for the coalition. We want to blame the Lands Commission and the, I mean, the Ministry of Lands in this situation because they are the administrators of government land. So to us, the 614 acres and these 61 acres are under their control. And for that matter, they should be able to protect it for civil aviation purposes. If for any reason you want to redemarcate it or reallocate it, it should be recourse to, I mean, take into consideration the effect and the impact it's going to have on our operation. Unfortunately, this was not done. The association told a news conference that works which have commenced on some of the sold-out lands do not only hamper the productivity of the staff, but also threatens the safety of aviation operations. They are thus calling for the cessation of these projects until the technical team is duly consulted. So basically, if they continue like this and they start building closer to our facilities, we are going to have issues. Um, the last I think about some last year, for instance, when they started working at Lampantanai, they severed our fiber optic uh, cables, and we had started having uh, communication challenges at the control center. Quickly, our engineers has to rally themselves and uh, I mean, march out the forces with the help from uh, uh, engineers from Ghana Telecom. They were able to restore um, these facilities without any harm. Already, the coalition says it has engaged the National Security, which asked management of the GCAA to form a technical committee to look into the matter. The coalition says it also submitted its concerns to management, the sector minister and the presidency, but no action has been taken on them. It's lunchtime and I'm hungry. Well, what do we have here? Assorted fried rice it is. A couple of years ago, it would have been unimaginable to think that with a click of a button, you'd be able to order an item from anywhere in the world. Well, in this 21st century, a lot of barriers are being broken. Now, with just your phone, you can order anything you want from your groceries to your tomatoes, pepper, Kobe, you name it. I'm sure you're curious to know how these online businesses operate. Well, let's demystify it for you. Senam is a mother and an entrepreneur, but she doesn't have a physical shop where she works from. I'm into fascinator making, hair bands, I do soaps, and I do makeup as well. I sell from home. Sometimes I get clients through referrals. And then through my WhatsApp, I usually post these things on my WhatsApp page and then on Instagram and then Facebook as well. Even though cost is the major reason why she works from home, she believes operating with her current arrangement comes with some advantages. I kind of love it now, selling from home, because at any point in time, I can attend to my customers. I can be taking care of the baby and then attending to a customer at the same time. But if I have a shop, you know, you're at the shop, baby is crying, going to take the baby from school, you know, feeding the baby and all that. Sometimes clients are around, you can't feed the baby well and all. Uh -huh. Tonye, on the other hand, is a local shoe manufacturer and has his shop at Kokomlimle in Accra. But he makes a significant chunk of his sales online. After COVID, I would say 60-40, um, 60-40 from 
social media and um, our e-commerce and um, 40 i mean 60 from our website and social media platforms and 40 being physical and even the um, well people also get get in touch through phone calls and they don't even come in we deliver so um the footfalls to the shop has really reduced what really does selling online entail especially when potential customers can be located in any part of the country oh it's just the internet bundle you basically have to do so i have subscribed to uh, wi-fi so i pay monthly okay so my means of delivery i use the dispatch riders and then sometimes i have to go to the main bus stations to give to the driver add names and everything and then i deliver nafisa is also a mother but her regular job won't allow her to go to the market as often as she would want so she decided to try out an online store and her experience wasn't pleasant oh as for him he should trust him he's a god-fearing person he even sent him the same uh, screenshot he had sent to me to convince him so then then i told my brother he should call the number he called and i took the phone so i started raining cases on this guy that do you remember transacting business with munira karim she had ordered for he started insulting me foolish woman and all of that I was like seriously you've taken my money close to like 550 you haven't delivered and now you have the guy to insult me and he hung up experiences like these sanam says are really bad for business it, it is true it's been happening i've had people my personally my sister had told me that she ordered for something and then when the thing came in it was a different thing you see all of these things are happening on social media in as much as we have bad people trying to you know pave their way in there they are equally good people there like us but what really is the way around it um well it's not it's not something that they can do overnight you know it comes with long years and a lot of hard work so for starters the it, it has to be personal you know even at this level we still do personal sales people will call you personally because they know you and not because necessarily you have a great product you know yes you have a great product but because of that personal relationship you have with them so for startups i think the personal they, they should do more of personal selling yes you have your social media platform you have your website but let people also know the people behind the brand the people behind the business so that okay so if anything goes goes amiss i know who to who to go to oh food is here thank you uh, ghana rice fans i have some very good news for you expect to get more of that sumptuous rice from the Western North region, as work is almost completed on the only rice processing factory there. Get some rice as we hear from some excited rice farmers. This really looks good. The Seshi, a consumer district of the Western North region, is predominantly a farming area. Rice farmers struggle to increase productivity due to challenges associated with funding and processing of their harvested rice. As part of efforts by the government to boost productivity and increase job opportunities, the government, with funding from the African Development Bank through the Agricultural Commodity Processing Development of the Rural Enterprise Program, started a rice processing factory in Sefi, a consumer in the Western North region. Farmers within the area have expressed excitement over the progress of work on the processing factory. According to them, over 200 acres of land have been earmarked to produce enough rice for the factory. The farmers say the factory has provided job for about 600 of them. They are thus confident of producing enough rice to feed the factory all year round once the factory begins production. Lawrence Tete is the spokesperson of the Rice Farmers Association in the Western North region. This factory, we know for sure that the factory is there for we, the business of Quantum Rice. But to help us, we have that set up to provide them. We know that our mothers and sisters will be getting job for themselves, which can also help them in the activities. So we, we are also Happy. We are happy of that and we will also do our best 
to supply the factory with all the needed uh, rice that can support the factory to grow in time to come, so that the dream of the president will come, really come to reality, that it will not be failed. So we thank him for the good initiative that we have given to us over here at Akoto. We have over 930 hectares that we have contributed for the first time to supply the factory, which the, the directors are on our underground recovery need to support uh, to feed the factory. We will not run out of stock. Inspecting the factory, the Minister for Trade and Industry, Alan Tremantin, explained that the initiative forms part of efforts by the government to enhance productivity as well as create jobs. According to the Minister, 6.6 million cities has been invested into the factory in order to enhance productivity. This government decided to take a proactive step in identifying uh, groups of farmers who are already involved in farming but who lack uh, the processing capacity uh, to add value to their uh, produce. So this factory um, comes under this model. It's called the Common User Facility 1D1F uh, project. So in this particular case, this uh, processing facility, which is a rice mill processing facility, one and a half tons per hour, is owned fully by a group of farmers. And government has provided the seed capital to these farmers to be able to bring in a processing facility which is currently being installed. So what government is doing is empowering farmers who otherwise would have absolutely no opportunity to be able to raise funding from a bank to establish a processing facility. So government provides the, 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 uh, the capital, the seed capital for them to install such a processing. And because it is owned by the farmers, it means that they get maximum value from not just supplying, uh, in this case, paddy rice to their own processing mill, but when it is milled, which is where the value really is, they also then get the full uh, value in terms of dividends uh, back to them. The National Director of the Rural Enterprise Program Kwesi Afa Entry also indicated that his outfit has exceeded the over 1,000 jobs they expected to create under the Rural Enterprise Program. Meanwhile, the minister, as part of his tour, inspected progress of work on the Budukwan Multi Fruit Royal Processing Factory and Royal Jute Factory in Pechi, all in the Ashanti region. <music>
The Ministry of Finance says it is ready to cooperate with the anti graft office and that it will not proceed with the initial public offering IPO ahead of the outcome of the corruption risk assessments. The special prosecutor, Martin Amidu, wrote to the Finance Ministry urging it to suspend the issuance of the IPO pending the receipts of critical documents to assist with the corruption risk assessments. The ministry says it is in agreement that more transparency is necessary to bolster the integrity of the already controversial deal. The ministry in its latest letter said, quote, The international investor community has been closely monitoring the outcome of the current state of the transaction and it would therefore be detrimental to proceed without receiving the necessary approvals and green lights from your office, unquote. Additionally, it said it will be required to fully disclose in the prospectus to the transaction the outcome of any investigation by the OPS's office prior to approval by the respective regulators of stock exchanges in Ghana and the United Kingdom. The ministry added that it is on standby to provide any further information or clarification for the special prosecutor's risk assessments. The special prosecutor has so far been given information concerning mainly the processes for the appointment of the transaction advisors, but it also wants information and documents relating to the identification and recommendation by the transaction advisors. Meanwhile, some civil society organizations opposed to the controversial Ejapa royalties deal have welcomed government's decision to put the launching of the deal's initial public offering, IPO, on hold. Commenting on the latest development, leader of the Alliance of Civil Society Organizations working in extractive anti-corruption and good governance, Dr. Steve Mantia told City Business News the decision is a step in the right direction. It's important to state that the announcement of the suspension of the attempts to list the Japan on the London Stock Exchange through an IPO is welcome. It's, it's a step in the right direction. And it's victory for Ghana in the sense that a lot of the times when we set up institutions of state, particularly the accountability institutions, and expect them to fulfill their mandate, they often will sit aloof and not ask when they need to act unless they've been ordered to do so by a higher authority. But in this particular case, we find that the special prosecutor, out of his own initiative, has intervened to investigate the numerous corruption risk allegations that are being raised by citizens. And I think that is quite proactive on his part and it's commendable. But going forward, the issues to be investigated by the special prosecutor are not all the concerns that we have as citizens. Our concern was, uh, yes, of course, on some of the corruption risks, but also on the basis of the valuation of the mineral royalty that lies at the heart of this transaction. And we think that the royalties have been undervalued. So, again, this requires some engagement to come to what will represent a fair value of our mineral royalties. There is also the issue about the choice of this model um, to optimize our value from our mineral ro royalties. We don't think this is the uh, most prudent model to go for. But the chairman of Parliament's Finance Committee, Mark Asibeya Boa, says government's decision to suspend the launching of the initial public offering for the Japa royalties deal will boost investor confidence. Speaking to City Business News, Parliament's Finance Committee chair expressed confidence the special prosecutor will find no infractions with the deal. The deal has not been suspended per se. What has happened is that the Office of the Special Prosecutor has asked for the production of documents and also is conducting a corruption risk assessment to see if government met all the requirements before it launched the IPO. In the face of that, it will be foolhardy to go ahead when such a serious office is conduct, uh, conducting a corruption risk assessment. So um, <laughs> the people who hold Ghana paper, those who subscribe to our euro bonds and such, they always stand ready to buy um, uh, our bonds and, and, uh, and such. I have worked on this one. I've followed it uh, religiously. And at no step has there been anything untoward. And so that's why the ministry is even saying that, yes, we are submitting ourselves to your corruption risk assessment. We are not going ahead. 
if anybody was worried, then they should be trying to push this one through in, in the face of the corruption risk. Assessment. But government is saying, yes, go ahead, do uh, whatever you want to do. And then when you are done and satisfied yourself, it will even give more confidence to investors. I'm happy that he, he has stepped in at this stage to do what he's doing. Congratulations to all cocoa farmers. You are 146 Ghana cities richer, at least for every bag of cocoa you sell now. And to all cocoa farmers who were busy hoarding their cocoa beans in anticipation of an increase in prices, well, the battle is over. You won. President Akufuado made the announcement of the increase and the farmers sure are excited and pleased with him. On Thursday, September 24, 2020, President Nana Akufuado announced a new producer prize for cocoa for the 2020-2021 crop season. The increase in the cocoa producer prize, which represents the biggest jump in more than four years, will see cocoa farmers receiving 660 Ghana cities per 64-kilogram bag or 10,560 Ghana cities per metric ton for the harvest season that begins on October 1st and continues through to September 2021. The new increase has been influenced by the imposition in 2019 by Ghana and Ivory Coast of a fixed living income differential of $400 a ton on all cocoa contracts sold by either country for the 2020-2021 season. Following this announcement, some cocoa farmers in the Achonye electoral area in the Sunyani municipality of the Bono region spoke to City Business News. <laughs> A camapa, why are they? A Bobona Basso, a percentage, a Becas, a Bona Bear, hundred per cent, because we hear more than Ghana here, a name of more than the year. Now, who say a name of more than say, or the big cook your form, a bed boy, a Myers, your one Harry Cacra, and the other than I say, your other than I say, Pa, Coco, in the Kutagana, oh, Ghana, CCI, was his year, Coco, in the Kutagana, and only dear dance your passa, in the best rabbi, and say, so what to Miss Amaya. Dani Debia, Omen and Coco Quaker for Sebaya, Yenzo, Yahomba Harry. And to Muna Abayan de Abano, a year de papa, he said, You who be said that. Timit Moon said Abano, or Yahua Jena and Cassa, Emma a queer four, say, Say a queer four, yes, we are today. Safi, Yania Jipa, I want to moon. A bedi cabo, Abano, Abasso, say, or bomb modding. Baby, our dear Druno, a year. In pen you force away here in ya, and this I won't call that. A born or dear, yea, a queer for no toda, dear, a susuno, and yea, no mumna, a benya, and tin to muka crana by the abbekai hono, a yusum. However, the Concerned Farmers Association of Ghana, who have also welcomed the increase, say urgent attention needs to be paid to the indiscriminate destruction of cocoa trees. President of the group, Nana Opambo Boateng Bunsu II, also spoke to City Business News. You promised us that this year is a year of rose, and then we have a belief in you that as you've increased the price of the cocoa, you are going to do a rose for us. So this is what we are telling you, Mr. President, just to fix our rose for us, because uh, most of our rose are major problem, bringing foodstuffs even from the farming community to, how do you call it, uh, to the major towns, is a challenge for us. And even bringing the cocoa from the cocoa farming area to the, the city is another major challenge. So we are pleading on you, Mr. President, just to fix all these things for us. And then also, the tree that is bearing the fruit for us is being destroyed. Almost 4,000 acres of cocoa plantation have been destroyed. This is what we are asking you, Mr. President, and Ghana Parliament to pass a law that will protect the cocoa trees. At least, if a farmer wants to plant the cocoa, there should be an agreement between the farmer and cocoa board that I'm taking these seedlings, I'm planting it for maybe 30 years or 40 years. After that, they can use their land for different things. If it happens like that, I think Ghana will have a way forward to go. And then also, the tonic that the president wants, we will get it. And then our... Uh, challenges and then also we will get more money and then our problems will be solved for us do you feel safe saving your money in a bank or a financial institution well the answer for a number of people across the country is a yes some years ago there were some uncertainties as the banking sector cleanup was carried out but two years down the line it appears a lot of nerves have calmed well that's according to the bank of Ghana. 
The banking industry ended 2019 with growing optimism after a period of cleanup and recapitalization. The reformation of the sector paved the way for directives from the regulator aimed at maintaining public trust and confidence. It was revealed in the 2019 third quarter monetary policy committee report of the Bank of Ghana that the banking sector had become well capitalized with 23 universal banks which were solvent, liquid, efficient and profitable. Prior to this, the industry was faced with countless panic withdrawals amidst the cleanup which left people uncertain about the safety of their deposits. Once again, the sector has had to react to dramatic changes and uncertainties created by the COVID-19 pandemic. Banks have therefore had to re-strategize to reprioritize projects. Interestingly though, Prior to COVID-19, the banks had begun aggressively driving the digital agenda. The foresight of the banks, as well as the implementation of the use of various digital channels, have greatly helped to support businesses during these times of COVID-19, as customers had already built confidence in the use of these channels. The latest summary of macroeconomic and financial data shows that confidence in the banking sector is growing as highlighted by growth in deposits and total assets of banks, among others. But what do Ghanaians make of the banking sector today after the cleanup? Some persons spoke to City Business News. I've really lost trust in the banking system of Ghana because no one ever thought uh, UT Bank, for instance, or, or like experience what happened. So I prefer to save on my phone, although people say it's not safe, but that's what I prefer. So for us, um, the, the, the government was actually uh, trying to correct our banking sector. I, don't, I still don't trust it because now we have foreign banks in the country here and we don't know what goes on in India, the banking economy as of now. So I still don't trust it. I have confidence in banking industry of Ghana. Okay, you see the incident that, that happened earlier, I think it has been resolved and now people are having full trust, which I am one of them. The Bank of Ghana represents Ghana, so I think I believe in whatever they want to say. So if they say you can save in any Ghana, I think we should trust them. I think what the Bank of Ghana has done is right. Because if they allowed the bank to run the way that it was, it won't be nice. The coronavirus pandemic has negatively impacted a lot of businesses. If you're a growing business and you need some money to boost your operations, the NBSSI has news for you. The Nkoswa loan, although different from other government interventions, also seeks to help some category of businesses to find their feet due to the negative impact of COVID-19 on their operations. It offers a one-year moratorium to beneficiaries and a two-year repayment period. It will focus on supporting micro, small and medium enterprises and startups in sectors such as agriculture, agribusiness, water and sanitation, healthcare and pharmaceuticals, trade and commerce, among others. To make this loan facility more accessible to businesses in distress, the board has begun an outdoor registration process, the first of which started on Friday at the Accra Metropolitan Assembly Forecourt. Here, a team from the NBSSI assists business owners through the registration process. Similar exercises will be held in other regions of the country. The director in charge of administration at the NBSSI, Joyce Noel Corte Papafio, tells City Business News the idea is to bring the loan facility closer to businesses in need. So today, NBSSI organization, we decided that we have to take a day out to come out to the public, be closer. We are leaving our offices to come closer to our businesses, those who have enterprises, to educate them tell them about what MBSSI organization is doing. If they have any challenges, 
they want to help us, we are going to do that to address it. So today, the main purpose for which we are here is to do education, avail ourselves to our MS and those who that we work with, to help them if there are any challenges. So if all the people also have other questions concerning the work that MBS has done, we are here today to address it. Some business owners who are in the last stage of the application process spoke to City Business News. As for booksellers, the COVID affected us so much because we were there with students and the students we are at home. So it has affected us to so many, in so many ways. Mm -hmm. Because if the children are going to this, that's what they will come and buy it. But now they are staying at home, so their business has collapsed. Let me say it has collapsed. Now I have, I have received the letter, the appointment letter, so I think I'm done. Now I have to be happy and I thank the government too for this offer because clearly a lot of people are having problems after this COVID. A lot of businesses have gone down and thanks to the government and its wisdom, people will start to be happy because they will get their businesses back. 25,000 MSMEs are expected to benefit from the facility. Meanwhile, with just a few days to the deadline, Executive Director of the National Board for Small Scale Industries, Kosi Yanki Aye, tells City Business News persons who are interested in applying for the loans should do so within time. It's a month from um, the time when we launched or when the funds have we finalized or uh, we've disbursed. Yes, we have over 60,000 applicants already. So we're going to quickly start dispersing as well and then we'll do it. I think as much as possible for us and for the government of Ghana, really the, at the beginning of this and I think that we're working on speeding up um, a lot of the processes. We've had a lot of challenges with some of the participating financial institutions we work with and clearly slowly they, some of them are coming up to really rise to the occasion to support the work that we're doing. But as much as possible, the president was very emphatic that timing was everything in the work we were doing, and we'll keep that and we'll continue to work on that. If your carpenter is not able to meet your order, please don't be mad at him. He may be sourcing his wood from Sokoban, where the workers there are agitating over the nature of their roads. The Sokoban Wood Village, which sits on 12.35 hectares of land, is one of Ghana's major hubs for wood products. People from all walks of life purchase different wood products from wood workers here. The enclave gives direct and indirect jobs to over a thousand persons in the mainstream and the value chain. But the challenges here are threatening economic activities. A major concern for many here is the deplorable nature of the rules. So today, I can't do any kura, any kura, any kura. Wow, to any sha, I can't say kura, 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 kura. Visa here, papa, kufwa be ya halo. O ko here, just say boss, you have been here on Friday. You got to be here chuku chuku. Any more here, you have to say waha. Edi ya sela no, ome ni paso here juma kura waha. So I borrow be three thousand and four thousand. Drivers who transport wood products within and outside the enclave say the poor road network takes a toll on them. They have questioned essence of paying daily tolls when the roads here continue to deteriorate. I even if so wa o dia danse o fam patani munsu a e kwa ni nyina sis so we start if we boost i hope so we buy boost if we kwa ni mu ba nyina tutu se one year na ka oto ade e se ka ase a na oto a within 3 days 4 5 days na ade na san sai na so so akoto bi so it is a see I'm the face problem pa 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 wa wo show office here ni ma wa hwa ateche guo e ye kwan e ben nyina kwan ni nyina asai so i know mo so mo pay enua no o mko fa enua firi enwura mo ba no enam so mo di enua ne ba ade asa obi enua nte no mo yi enua no so de agu kwam ndi ama aha kwan ne de even kwa se eja to hana for yourself for cry from so mo mla 
maybe on build rock rock could do jan and no see yourself. And no need a problem, Cassia Pa. Came me from by the umcra there in Chey of crack 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 and get a best. So bet my for Queen Bill Cross was a summer crave for Cramaya and Cape. This year no tone as seven of the in fat. Say any man, you mean a year and a nan do with me a year be beer for home a way upon a Maya, Cape boy. See a bedroono, what you are, Mamma came through a two city. Ucha, eh, the whole day. But then I'm so quiet in two char, no question any more. I bear you can cut off from Yaman Quan Kikumipa. The best says it and paying for Bamui, Monche, eh, Sai Tohono. Even the premises of the building, which serves as the administration block, is muddy with choked drains. The leadership of the Ghana Timber Sellers Association says conditions at the Wood Village are worsening. The challenge started somewhere last two years. It has been a problem on our head. It's not helping our business at all. The members are putting enough pressure on me. The pressure is a, a, a burdensome. Uh, because day in day they come to me, Chairman, what, what are we doing about, about the road? Because the road is uh, 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 disturbing our business. It has affected us. And also, if you look at the processing areas, it has affected the processing areas very, very, very much. So we are appealing to government to come to our aid. They are thus appealing to government to intervene and address their concerns. My appeal to gov the government is that uh, government uh, sought funding from Alliance uh, uh, France in, in France to, to do this business for us. And the business is getting out of hand. So I, I think government should come in and help, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, do something about it in, in terms of uh, maintenance. And the situation over here has been neglected by successive governments. About seven years ago, when this problem started, successive governments have neglect, neglected us. So now the situation is very, very serious. So we are calling on government to come to our aid because government declared this year as the year of rose. So we thought maybe we will be considered, but we can't see, we, we didn't see anything coming from the central government. So we are appealing to government to also consider us in that. Uh, project that is ongoing. Withdrawal or deficit? Withdrawal. Just give me your number. Mobile money service clearly has come to stay. It is such a lifesaver with all the convenience it gives us to be able to pay our bills, make all our money transactions by credit and the list goes on and on and on. No wonder there has been such an increase in the volume of transactions that are carried out on that platform. Are you done? Yes, please. The first significant surge in the value of mobile money transactions this year was seen in May as the total amount shot up from 32.8 billion Ghana CDs in April to 41.5 billion Ghana CDs in May, representing a whopping 26.5% increase. The total number of mobile money transactions also corroborates the growing adoption of the platform as against other forms of payment. The year began with 190 million transactions in January and rose to 267 million in August representing a growth of 41%. The story is different for checks as both volume and value of checks cleared in the first eight months of 2020 dropped by 10.7% and 9.7% respectively. Speaking to City Business News on the changing landscape for payments for consumers and businesses, banking consultant Nanotui Champon said the mobile money platform will only grow from strength to strength. The days of uh, checks are numbered in the sense that uh, even in the UK, they decided to pass a legislation to ban the issue of checks uh, until some of the uh, pensioners said, no, that's what we depend on, and they relaxed it. But the picture we see in Ghana is the same picture worldwide, that less and less transactions are being done through the paper system. Now, it's almost all gone digital. So it's not surprising that Momo has moved uh, uh, along the trajectory that it has, and it's going to be even more. Uh, as we go into the last quarter, and the pre-Christmas season, yes, people's expenditures are going to be more 
digital through the Momo system rather than physical, either even notes and coins or through the check system. So I think uh, on, for the Momo people, uh, their Christmas it will be there forever in that they are going to benefit from the increase in transactions uh, that we envisage. Wouldn't it be great to get fuel cheaper today than you did yesterday? Well, at least our trotro fares would decrease a bit. Well, uh, the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers is making some good predictions in that regard. The coronavirus pandemic negatively impacted the oil markets with prices dropping sharply. The global outbreak led to a drastic drop in demand for fuel across the world, compelling producers to reduce their prices over fears of running out of storage. In the UK, for instance, the benchmark for oil slumped 10% to around $16 a barrel in another day of declines. It came after the price of West Texas Intermediate. The benchmark for US oil also fell below zero for the first time ever in April. In Ghana, prices fell from almost 5 Ghana cities per liter of fuel to 3.5 Ghana cities per liter at some fuel stations. But as many countries across the world began easing some COVID-19 induced restrictions, the demand for fuel began to pick up and prices of fuel did same simultaneously. Petrol is currently selling at about 4.89 Ghana cities per liter, while diesel goes for 4.91 Ghana CD per liter. COPEC had earlier predicted a drop in fuel prices for the second pricing window of September. This saw some major oil marketing companies like Goyle reduce their prices to 4.77 Ghana CDs for both diesel and petrol. But Executive Secretary of COPEC, Duncan Amwa, believes more of such reductions should be expected. Our check with the PLAT benchmark indicates uh, PMS, uh, petrol in short, uh, probably has lost about four pesos a liter. If you do just the international benchmark plat values, uh, again, agro or diesel also seem to have uh, recorded some 10 pesos reduction. And so if all things are held equal, if the city whose performance have been quite stable over the past um, couple of weeks uh, should be taken into account, Ghanaians should expect at least some marginal reductions in pump prices. You are looking at about 1% for petrol and 2% for diesel as far as the second window, September, is concerned. Now, we know we are in an election year and um, as we enter the fourth quarter in the pricing window, what's your anticipation? Uh, as we speak, there's quite a volatile situation uh, in the Middle East. You have a situation where Saudi is now uh, reducing their export values for even their crude. It has an effect on finished products. Uh, we will be happy to have prices continuously fall so that Ghanaians can at least be able to accommodate uh, their fuel you know, expenditure. Uh, that notwithstanding, anything else could also happen. So it is our anticipation that prices will fall between now and December. But if nothing happens geopolitically to, I mean, change that dynamics, it is quite likely that we will see prices drop uh, between now and December. That'll be all for this edition of the Business Weekly here on City TV. For regular news updates, please check out our website, citybusinessnews.com. For the latest in the world of business on television, check out the business dashboard at 7 p.m. every weekday. My name is Michael Obudu. Thank you for watching. As always, stay informed.